Today I want to talk about two things, specifically two games and their most recent trailers. At this year's Paris Games Week convention, the new trailer for The Last of Us 2 and the new trailer for Detroit Become Human were shown. Both were met with outcry. In both cases, the outcry is a lot of fucking nonsense. Absolute fucking nonsense. I know I'm late to the party, but as a wise old scholar once said, better late to the party than never to the party. <laughs> Let's start with The Last of Us 2. The corresponding article comes from Polygon. They begin with the always lovely demanding of creators to do exactly what they want them to do. Stop using extreme violence to sell your game. It's time to step back and recognise the connotation of imagery. First of all, it's Naughty Dog, one of the most progressive and open-minded developers around. And anyway, pretty sure they can do whatever the fuck they want to sell their game. The audacity of anyone telling them how to sell their game is insane. What complete fucking arrogance. Bones bludgeoned with hammers, a noose wrapped tightly around a struggling woman's neck. The blade of a knife pressed into a vulnerable stomach. The gruesome imagery Naughty Dog manages to cram into a 5 minute trailer for The Last of Us Part 2 is physically uncomfortable to sit through. Wow, shocking. It's almost as if it's set in a gnarly, lawless, post-apocalyptic world. But nah, maybe they should have just shown Ellie picking some flowers. Should have shown Joel playing chess with the charming old man down the road. Of course it's physically uncomfortable to sit through. That is the actual point. They're not using gratuitous violence to sell their game. It's part of what the game is. That's a part of their world. What the fuck does that accusation even mean anyway? Naughty Dog thinks that by showing extreme violence people will want to buy their game? Well, yeah, it looks intriguing. They're literally just showing what their game is about. I don't even know if I understand what Polygon's point is. They probably don't either. And then at the end we see, there's an argument to be made that the trailer raises an enticing question. Why are these women being attacked? But that mystery is both too familiar and too broad. Why are these women being attacked? The mystery is both too familiar and too broad? What the actual fuck are you talking about? What the fuck does that even mean? Of course the mystery is too broad. Would you like them to release the game's script in conjunction with the trailer so you can have the whole story spoiled and everything fucking explained? I actually thought I'd be able to dissect this article, but I don't have the slightest idea on earth what they're talking about. Jesus fucking Christ. And here we go. The crux of Polygon's problem. Inevitable. As always. Let's read this. The violence is particularly upsetting as it features the assault of women. Violent attacks on women, many times for perfunctory purposes, isn't new. The killing joke saw the Joker torture Barbara Gordon in a statement with reinforced the notion that gender influences violence. The volatile imagery used in the trailer to underline the heinous acts being committed are familiar scenes to us. We've seen this play out in other TV shows or movies before and in real life. 35% of women have experienced violence at the hands of another person in their lifetime, according to according to two according to 2017 report from the United Nations. <laughs> the fact that their antagonist is a woman herself does little to undercut what this trailer is on its most blunt level. An extended sequence of brutal and unexplained violence against women being used to thrill the viewer and ultimately to sell a video game. Of course it's more upsetting that the violence is against women, because a woman being tortured is much worse than a man being tortured, right? A man's life is obviously worth less than a woman's, right? Women are tiny, pathetic creatures that need protection, and any violence against them in a video game is a heinous offence, right? Holy fucking shit, what a load of bollocks. Oh, and violence being used against women to sell the game, yes, that's what it is. Let's ignore the fact that Naughty Dog have clearly put a lot of time into developing interesting female protagonists and antagonists. Let's ignore the fact that most of the characters on screen are female, something that Polygon very interestingly seem to ignore every single time it happens. It's almost, almost as if they just want to seek out material which reinforces their agenda. Naughty Dog are definitely not giving an insight into how the world has gotten even darker from The Last of Us to The Last of Us Part 2. Neil Druckmann, one of the most left-leaning developers around, is 100% insidiously using violence against women to generate sales for his game, which definitely needs controversy to be sold. It's not as if the first game is generally regarded as one of the best of all time or anything. Fucking hell. I can't even finish this article. Complete fucking garbage. Next, the second game is Detroit Become Human, and the critic that I'll be criticising is, disappointingly, one of my heroes. 
Jim Sterling. When the trailer was released, Sterling wrote this article entitled, Detroit's Domestic Abuse Trailer is a Hackneyed Farce. In it, Sterling says, Let me preface the rest of what I'm about to say by emphatically stating that I believe video games have the potential and deserve the freedom to explore dark themes outside of simply gunning down soldiers and fighting off monsters. Tackling grounded, potentially traumatic real life scenarios in games is possible and the pursuit can even be admirable. I fully support an art medium that wants to put on its adult pants and examine horrors closer to home. Horrors that may very well brush up against experiences the players themselves have had. David Cage is not the man for the job. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise that every developer and writer in the industry should run their ideas past Jim Sterling before they decide what they should do. Here we have yet another critic telling a developer what they should or shouldn't have in their game. Complete bollocks. He goes on to make this statement too. By his own styling, Cage is the sole creative force behind his projects and as such takes de facto credit for Quantic Dream's content. Unfortunately for David Cage, his most famous contribution to the literary side of gaming has been a single name. Jason. Yeah, sure, okay. Cage's greatest contribution to the literary side of gaming has been that meme. What a completely fucking dumb comment. Heavy Rain, while very divisive, pushed boundaries in ways that other games never have and create tension for me that I've never experienced before or since in a video game. He does go on to say that Cage has great ideas, is very innovative, etc, but continues to ridicule and insult his talent as a writer. I completely agree that some of Cage's writing is dreadful. See my video on Indigo Prophecy for proof, but Sterling's article is a disgrace. Let's keep going so I can explain why. First of all, there's this. You don't choose to talk about domestic abuse. This is a David Cage quote. It's not like I was like, oh, let's write a scene about domestic abuse. It's not how it works. The problem with that statement is that it's horseshit. First of all, obviously Cage chose to talk about it. Nobody forced his hand. We wasn't possessed by the spirit of polyhymnia. Whatever the fuck that is. When you write a story, you are making conscious decisions about the story you're writing, and the characters you're using, and the events that why the fuck am I having to explain how choices and actions are related? This is complete ignorance from Sterling, whether it's deliberate or otherwise. It's pretty fucking obvious what Cage meant. He meant that he didn't sit down one day and say, hmm, I think I'll talk about domestic abuse in my game. The implication is quite obviously that he created this character, and her arc involved her being a maid of some sort. It was probably at this point that the idea crossed Cage's mind to further question the idea of humanity by giving gamers a chance to choose how an android would act in an incredibly brutal and human situation. Sounds good to me. He continues to assert that this is certainly a subject too mature for his creative ability and concludes the article by saying he should stick to jealous ghosts and rogue AI conspiracies. Reality is just too real for David Cage to handle. This is the main problem I have with this whole article and the Eurogamer interview it stemmed from. I find it extremely hypocritical for a man who constantly laments the industry's laziness to shit all over one of the few who's creative, unique and tries new things. I get what he's saying, that Cage isn't mature enough to handle delicate topics, but you don't get to decide that, and neither do I. It's so fucking arrogant to mock, insult and ridicule someone who's A, contributed more to the gaming industry than you ever will, and B, makes very genuine attempts to keep the industry fresh. Why the fuck would any developer out there try to tackle a difficult topic when critics are going to rip apart and insult anyone who doesn't do it to their exact liking? These articles are so potentially damaging to the industry. As you can tell, both of these stories fucking enraged me. Due to the fucking nonsensical PC bollocks of Polygon and Sterling's arrogance, I felt that these two games deserved someone else to stand up for them. Rant over. Thanks as always for watching. I can't describe how much it means to me. It really is amazing that you support me so much. I really, really want people to let me know what they think about both of these. Comment below or message me on Twitter at OptionalStealth if you want to talk about it. I'll see you all next week.